Hi, welcome to Jenkins Boatworks. I am Chuck Jenkins, and in this episode, we're going to show how we taper the mast uh, to its correct dimensions. It's been a lot of work, uh, 16 feet and uh, planing and sanding, sanding, so anyway, we'll get right to that. Uh, we did get the new t-shirts in. This is just the old one that I have, but we got a whole new order uh, shipment in, so if, uh, we'll make an offer on that at the end of the video. All right, here we go. I got this really cool ruler that my wife got me for Christmas, and it's got, these are perforated, these little holes are, and so you can get like down to 64 of an inch, or it doesn't even have eights on it, the smallest is 16 and what I'm doing is I'm setting up my, my compass here because I'm making some circles, and I'll show you that here just in a second. So like, if I want one that's two and a quarter, then, I'm sorry, two and an eighth, which is one of them that I'm making, two and an eighth, then I gotta have this thing set so that it's at um, two and one sixteenth. So I adjust like that up here, and now I get two and a sixteenth, or one and a sixteenth. So this is going to be a total of uh, two and an eighth. So let's put this dude right down here in the middle and then draw my circle and, and I already did. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking it over to the bandsaw. I got a new blade and uh, just cutting it out on here. I have several of these already done. So you can kind of see what, what it looks like. And so I have one that's at three inches, one that's at three and a quarter. And then this one here I did was two and five eighths. And, and what these are is these are the diameters that I need for the mast. So the mast is up in the shop. I'm still down in my, in my old garage. The shop is up that driveway. You can't even see it from here. Um, and so anyway, I want to know if I'm getting close to the right diameters at the varying places on the mast. So I decide, well, I'll make these deals, and then I can slide them over there, and I can see, number one, if I'm round, and number two, if I'm at the right dimension. So like one end of the mast is supposed to be two and five eighths. Most of the longest section in the middle is three and a quarter. And then there's a part about five feet. At one end goes from three inches down to the two and five eighths. And then there's one end that is the two and an eighth. So that's the last one I'm doing here. And I, I measured the diameter on here and it's right at two and an eighth. Now the only trick is I gotta be able to cut it out on the bandsaw without goofing it up. So we'll do that now and then we'll show you how they fit up on the mast if I ever get it trimmed down that much. This is tricky because it's really little. You gotta go really slow. Oh, yeah, I can't hold the camera and do it, but you get the idea. So we're still working on the mast. Um, I had cut out these little boards to measure my diameters. Three and a quarter, two and five eighths. And I've been using the power plane and we've got a pretty serious taper that comes up to the, to the mast head, to the top. Up there it's only supposed to be two and an eighth. Five feet back, it's three inches. And by the time you get to 10 feet back, it's three and a quarter. And most of the mast is three and a quarter. That's the, the thickest part of it. And then um, when you get closer to the end, down to the bottom, uh, the last 25 inches taper down to the two and the five eighths. So this one is for down there. Um, so basically how this is working is uh, 
like this is how big it's supposed to be on the end. I already know it's, it's not quite there, but it's really close. Um, then here's the three inch one. So what I do, just slide it on here, see how far I can get. I did this a minute ago, and I know that I'm only getting up not quite three feet, pretty close. Here's my five foot mark. So I need to be able to get this three inch one all the way up to here, and still need to taper this down until we get to two and eight down here. So it's coming, we're getting there. I can feel a lot of flat edges on here. So I may change from the, from the power plane to the belt sander. This is the three and a quarter one. And you can see it slides on up here a little ways. See how I can get all the way up to the five foot mark there. So we're getting there. I know that we've done quite a bit of video on this so far, uh, but it's a lot of work. So here's up at the top of the mast where we need to be two and an eight. And then coming down here, I did cut it off. We're at 16 foot four. And uh, we're really getting to a point where it's hard to see my splices. Um, you can see one just under the cord there. But I'm pretty happy with that. And I believe I'm going to wrap this with fiberglass and epoxy, at least in the scarf area. So uh, I got this round enough that I had to put these clamps on here on the table to hold it because it kept trying to roll away. <laughs> so just the little things you learn. I found a piece of wood in the down in the garage over there on the other end of the table. And that is a piece of Douglas fir that was left over from when we did the shear clamp. And uh, it's just long enough and just thick enough that I can get my uh, jib club. So like a little boom on the jib out of that. And that's not going to be too hard to work. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I was on um, looking for some bronze and some other stuff, and I was on Ballantyne's boat shop website. You know how much they want for this mast? Over $2,000. Enough to make you want to make masks. All right, we'll uh, do some more once we get down to the dimensions. There are literally, literally hours involved in this. Uh, this is long uh, work, but there's something rather satisfying about it. I've got the power plane now set down to 1 64th, so we're just taking off little bits. I don't want to overdo it, and uh, slow and steady wins the race. Bernie the belt sander. It sure does get hot as we go over this, so every once in a while I just kind of have to stop, and I maybe need to change the paper a little more often. This Douglas fir is uh, just a beautiful piece of wood, and for as much time as we've spent in the hull, uh, inside and out, and in the interior of the boat, 
uh, this is what sticks up out of the water and so it's a it's a focal point uh, especially at a distance and I, I really couldn't be happier with uh, the grain and just the overall look of the wood and I think by the time we get it finished it's going to be just beautiful. Thanks for watching. Um, as I mentioned at the first we do have the new Jenkins Boat Work t-shirts in. One size fits all or all extra large. Uh, first come, first serve. Uh, we've got a, a small shipment in uh, because we've had a, a request for a couple of uh, shirts which we've sent out. If you're interested, uh, leave a comment uh, below here in the video and we'll get it out to you. One other note, uh, if you're on Facebook, we have the Haven 12 and a half group. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, there's a couple of quick questions to answer and then uh, uh, we can get you in that and there's uh, several other builders that are a part of that as well as uh, just some kind of cool pictures of like uh, Hershoff 12s and uh, and just other other interesting stuff related to the Haven. All right see you next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.